Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today is a very special episode. We're welcoming back Howie Zales, who is the president of Veridity Entertainment Services. Howie, we've just finally made it to the finish line, at least on, on releasing the book, man. I just have to say, how do you feel? Very excited and excited to be here. Thanks so much, Adam. Oh, man. So it, it's great to have you back on the show. And I'm excited to get some some updates on what's going on with Veridity Entertainment Services and your companies overall. I know you got some big things happening in 2023. And also, of course, we're going to talk about the book. So long time waiting for the publication. A lot, lot of work went in. Yeah. Authors put in a, a great effort. And I'm, I'm just so thoroughly pleased with the end product in the book. So we'll, let's, let's get this episode started, Howie, the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Howie, what mission matters to you? Yeah, what mission matters to me is, you know, serving our clients, giving them the best possible service possible, doing a, a great job so they feel good about us. And the next time they have a project, we're the first people that they think to call. I love having mission-based entrepreneurs on the line to share their experience and their journey and to celebrate them and their work so that we can all learn from that too and grow together. So Howie, just to get us kicked off, I don't want to assume we got, we got had a lot of growth on the show since you last came on. I don't want to assume that all of our new listeners caught some of the previous content and some of your backstory. So maybe let's just start a little bit with, with your with your story about how you went really from, from a, a cameraman and kind of behind the scenes to, to running a company and really becoming a Media powerhouse. Yeah. You know, I started off as a camera operator doing regional sports in the New York area. And I, one day I did a, a show and I met the director from NBC sports and I did a really good job. And he said, Hey, we're starting this new football league called the XFL. Do you want to come and join our team? I'd love to have you. And that turned into like a lifelong friendship and wherever he went, he, I was fortunate enough to go along with him to Super Bowls, Kentucky Derbies, Olympics, you name it, we shot it. And simultaneous to being a camera operator with NBC and WWE, I, I also had my own business on the side where I would hire sports and entertainment crews anywhere from camera people to audio people for the same type of events that I was showing up and shooting. And uh, one day I, we, my wife, you know, I was so tired from all the traveling, being on a plane four days a week, mm. no, little sleep. My wife said to me, you know, you're more of an entrepreneur than a camera person. We need to sit down and look at our finances. And that's exactly what we did. And we figured out that, you know, I didn't need the camera work, that I needed to have a mindset change. And I was really a, an entrepreneur that did the camera work on the side. Yeah. And so, and that, one of the interesting things I found was definitely your topic and what you chose to to write about in the book. So the title of your, the title of your work is The Smart Way to Trust Your Gut. Like yeah. what, what was the inspiration for this? The, the main inspiration for that is my company, HJZ Productions, the one I was just talking about. We were tasked by West Point during COVID mm -hmm. to put together the graduation for the cadets because not even the parents were allowed to come. Yeah. So we hired everyone from the producer to the director on down through PAs and runners. Mm -hmm. So when I hired the director, he said he needed to have his, his guy, his technical director there on site. And he gave me his name mm -hmm. and Jamie's name had an 818 area code next to it, which to me meant he lived in California. Yeah. And I kind of put up a little argument and said, I got plenty of my New York guys that have been sitting home during COVID. And he's like, no, trust me, I got to have my guy. So, but something in my gut said, you know what, just go with it because th there's a reason. I couldn't put my finger on it, but mm -hmm. I just went with it. Didn't put up a fight. I hired Jamie and we got to talking and Jamie was very into live streaming, which was an area where I was just breaking into. Mm. And he was very helpful on, on getting me to launch and, or pivot my mm -hmm. new business that kind of just got shut down during COVID. 
Yeah. And, and kind of fast forwarding a little bit from that, like, and cause we're recording this 2023. So, you know, COVID's for the most part behind us, at least in the U S. And so what, what happened after you got into streaming and how did you fare like during that time period? Cause I I've seen the growth and I've seen what's happened and I'm just, it's exciting to me. Yeah. I, I, well, funny story. We were, I'm Jewish and I went to the rabbi at the temple in September or let's say August of 2020. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, we're not going to be able to do the services the way you normally do it. We're going to have to have cameras and, and the mm -hmm. streaming equipment, which I just learned all about from Jamie. <laughs> and we're going to need this, 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 and that. And we kind of invested in some of it and lent yeah. it to the temple. And as we were setting up in the temple for the these services, I get a call from a client that said they need to interview nine baseball players in nine separate cities. Mm -hmm. But the only thing is the interviewer had to be remote. She could not leave her house. Mm -hmm. He said, can you do that? And I said, of course. And I, I hung up the phone. I called my wife. I said, you're never going to believe what I just agreed to. I have no idea how we're going to do it. <laughs> But, you know, I turned to my network, Jamie being one of those people, and we, we figured it out. Yeah. And surrounding yourself, one of the things you write about in the book is surrounding yourself with the right people and the right expertise. Like, like how has that played out? And not just, the, and not just in your business, but in your career. Yeah. I, I always try to surround myself with either people that are, have been through situations before I have, mm -hmm. mentors people that are a lot smarter than I am, especially when it comes to, you know, networking and electronics and, you know, the internet. So I always try to surround myself with people that are a lot smarter so I can learn because if mm -hmm. I'm not learning from a situation, then I'm not growing. Mm -hmm. And that, that's how I look at it. Yeah. And if we fast forward a bit now, you know, post COVID and we look at what's happened now. So now you have that whole streaming, that whole remote area. And now as well, the in-person and everything else, is that, is that all picking up as well? Yeah, we, we do a ton of in-person slash we'll call it hybrid events mm -hmm. where there's an in-person aspect and a virtual solution. So we provide simultaneously both mm -hmm. aspects of the production with all of our equipment. Yeah. So looking at, and one of the things, so for anybody that's done any type of production or just really any business, but production, I mean, I guess when I got into this business, I didn't really know much about it. And, you know, over time we were able to build systems and other things, but for what you're doing and kind of some of the complexity, one of the things you wrote about in, in the book as well was the concept of building systems and what that looks like. So can you elaborate on that a little bit more for us? Sure. Especially when you're dealing with technology and computers, mm -hmm. certain computers and certain programs need to be opened in a certain order. Otherwise, one program can take over another program. Mm -hmm. uh, so we found this through trial and error, and we developed a system and process to our production. As soon as the computer is powered on, we'll open Chrome. Then we'll open the next program and the next program and the next program until each every program is operational. But mm -hmm. if we don't do it in a specific order, we can put the production in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. So before every show, I resend out the system and processes for opening up our software and making mm -hmm. sure that the you know everyone on the team is operating from the same uh, system and processes. So a lot of business owners, a lot of entrepreneurs and executives that watch this show. And, and one of the things that you've been mentioning throughout this, this conversation is top of their mind. So it's, you know, how do they produce content? How do they distribute it? How do they stay really relevant, whether it's virtual or in person? I mean, both of them are now, I, I feel like there's almost an expectation if you're holding an event, how do I stream in or how do I look at it live as well? When you have a live event, I know I just did a, a speaking event recently in Miami and, and the first thing that our, well, we sent it out in our newsletter. And the first thing that they, that, you know, we got replies for was that, Hey, I can't come to Miami, but where can I pick up the stream or who's going to be streaming it? Or what do I do there? And, and I, you know, I emailed the event organizer and they didn't necessarily have a, have a solution for that. And they were thinking of something that they were contemplating. I mean, like, how do people kind of like, how should they be thinking about this production side of things? And just in general, like how they get content out to their audience now going forward, let's say going into 2023. Yeah. And, and, and the, th the reason why you want to have a, a virtual audience is mm -hmm. for what you just explained, right? People can't make it. Maybe you can pick up another thousand to two yeah. to 3000 people 
that wouldn't have, you know, been able to come that are now maybe paying to watch the stream, obviously at a different pay level, right? But it's another source of revenue. And they could, you know, companies can contact a company like ours. We have different package levels for the different t styles of production. It depends what, dependent what's needed. Yeah. We have a content delivery network where we would stream to our content delivery network and place that player in your website. And that way you send everyone to your website to watch the live stream of whatever the event yes. is. And now looking forward, I mean, and so when we think about the types of events, so where you started your career, like those are pretty obvious, right? Like sporting events, the Super Bowl, like all these big events, but for companies and for business owners, let's bring it and make it kind of practical for them, like their meetings. What, what else? Like what else have you seen out there? Yeah, we, we've done investor meetings. We've done fireside chats. We've done, actually, we have one going on right now. We've done corporate meetings, mm -hmm. uh, like state of the company meetings streamed globally in three different languages through mm -hmm. different platforms. We've done, you know, QR polls within live streams to kind of make it more fun and interesting. We've done concerts and now we're getting into live streaming sporting events events like track and field that may not have the money for a true TV broadcast, yeah. but does have some money to get live streamed. So yeah. that's just another avenue of income for those sorts of businesses. Yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. And the way, and what you said, I don't want to kind of glance over that to something to pick up, a, you know, an additional thousand viewers or things like that, especially when people are thinking about like, you know, how many people they could fit in a room, like the idea that people are so willing and able to connect online, whether it's on their phone or otherwise to, to, to tune into the streams, a big deal, but then, so, okay. So now you have all these people there, right? Um, how do you make it engaging? Like, how do you make it so that it's not just a, a, a zoom call, let's say, or something like, ah, I've been on zoom. Like, how do you keep people like, like part of the stream or, or engaged? Like what, what are some of the tips there? Great question. So another reason why you would hire a company like ours, yeah. my team and I, we've all worked in the television business for 20 or more years. Mm -hmm. So we know what a good camera shot looks like. We know what's pleasing to the eye. Mm -hmm. We know the rhythm and the flow of a production. So it, it's pleasing to you and not, we're not just sitting on a, a wide shot of eight yeah. people in the camera frame for two hours and expecting you to, to stay awake. We're yeah. constantly cutting cameras, making it more interesting by following the conversation. Mm -hmm. And hopefully the client will provide us with, you know, supporting documents like a PowerPoint presentation. Each speaker has a certain amount of slides and mm -hmm. through a piece of equipment, they'll cue us when to change the slides and we'll uh, either have the slides full screen or we'll have the slides in a big box and the person speaking in a little box and we'll yeah. cut back and forth. We we'll just make it interesting. And we'll also use, we'll help the clients produce video pieces to help drive their point across mm -hmm. whichever whatever that point is but we'll help them drive dr drive drive the point across mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I'll be upfront, like, especially when these are done, are done well, like to me, sometimes the, the, the virtual experience can even be better than the live experience. And that's just my, that's just my two cents. I'm like, do I, would I rather sit on my couch and do this or do I want to hop on a plane? I don't, I'm not going to hop on a plane if I don't necessarily have to, but if I could just sit there, get the information, have the experience, eat some popcorn, like, Hey, I'm in. And the other way to, another aspect of that is, right, it always exists yeah. and you could always rewatch it. Maybe you've missed something, right? Mm -hmm. If you go in, in person, you don't have the opportunity. Mm -hmm you know, having the camera set up and just doing a wide shot for two hours and expecting people not to fall asleep. I think I almost got a direct, I almost quoted you directly on that one. And that let's just say, because I've probably done that at some point in streaming and I'm guilty. I'm one of those people did, that didn't really understand what I was doing and just said, Hey, we just set up a camera and we go, right? What are some of the things that you've, and not, not to pick on anybody specifically, but I do like to allow people the opportunity to, to self-identify. And I picked on myself First, right, just leaving that wide camera angle and just setting up the camera and just letting it go, and that—that's the event for the online viewers, not really ex respecting their time or their. What are some of the things that the the don'ts, if you will, that you've also seen that people should just be thinking about as they reassess their strategy? So maybe I'll start with 
the the do's right that for works. example yep. you you want to have good lighting you want to look good and make sure you're well lit so you stand out right um mm -hmm. you probably the most important thing is a good microphone you want to sound good because mm -hmm. you can look good and and what i mean look good be well lit and your yeah. camera is good but if the people can't understand what you're saying because you have a bad microphone then it doesn't matter what you look like and you want a good camera you want to be in focus you want your eyeballs to be in focus you don't want the background to be in focus mm -hmm. um and just tips like that and you want to have a good internet connection make sure that no if you're doing this from your house or office mm -hmm. make sure you have the you're plugged into the ethernet and not working off wi-fi i know you can talk about these tips for days and i know to for you to download your brain into what to do in one interview is not happening so we'll definitely be leaving obviously your your contact info website and things like that in the in the show notes so that our audience can click on that and get more in depth and connect with your team on on what they should be doing and really what what makes but i want to take a moment and circle back to the uh, to the book because whenever someone you know when people share some things in in our books that are you know i feel useful helpful and even vulnerable like you wrote about handling failure and mm -hmm. i was thinking about that and it's easy for somebody to go out there and to write about you know what what they've done good i've made this money i've done this i was smart this time and that time but you talked also about handling failure which i thought was tell us a little bit more about that piece for me failure costs money mm -hmm. uh, if if i make a mistake it it's going to usually ends up costing us money cuz our mistakes come uh, when we fail we overbook the mm -hmm. TV crews that we need mm -hmm. and it ends up costing us money because if we don't cancel someone within 72 hours of the mm -hmm. time that they're supposed to show up on location, we need to pay them. Mm -hmm. And most times we figure out that we've overbooked at the time that they're supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. So I was clearly the person at fault making the mistake because I was the one mm -hmm. speaking to the clients, not in front of my computer or in, a, in my office when I was speaking to the clients. Mm -hmm. So there was this one case that literally cost us close to $10,000 because mm -hmm. I took a call from a client. I said, yeah, no problem. We'll cancel however many people it was. Mm -hmm. And I forgot because I wasn't where I should have been when I should have been taking that call. Mm -hmm. And that will never happen again. Yeah, we, we've all been there. It happens. I know. I just, I just, I thought it was great that you brought it up and that you put it in the book because I know when I read it, I, I, I had that little feeling like, ah, it's not just me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we know intuitively that we all make mistakes, especially as entrepreneurs, executives, you know, and, and just people, right? Like we all make yeah. mistakes, but, um, but uh, like just understanding and feeling that connection as humans knowing, Hey, you know, we're all, we're all, we're all in this experience together in terms of trying to do better. So I thought it was great. I, I I know we've talked a bit, Howie, about, about your companies overall, but I just want to go a little bit further just to make sure it's clear. So tell us a little bit more about Veridity Entertainment Services and you know exactly what you're what you're fulfilling for your clients. Yeah. So Veridity Entertainment Services, we we help our clients produce in-person or hybrid events mm -hmm. or even fully virtual events at all different levels, from small packages, to small businesses to the big fortune 500 company have, you know, that want to put together, you know, a half a million dollar production. So we, we've done all different levels. We have different packages based on different, what the client's needs are. And for us, it's what can we do with the technology that exists to give you the most interesting and, and best production possible. Yeah. And, and as you mentioned, you're also work with the big companies and, and you, I think you said it maybe once or twice in the interview, but you know, your, your team, 20 years plus experience, like you guys, you guys are pros. You're working on big productions, like for, for many years in your career, right? Yeah. I, I've, as, as a camera operator, I've worked on some of the biggest sporting events and yeah. entertainment ev events that exist yeah. from Olympics to Super Bowls to Kentucky Derbies to, you know, World Series and NHL finals mm -hmm. to WrestleManias. I, I spent 20 something years with the World Wrestling Entertainment <laughs> to some huge live stream productions with top tier talent athletes mm -hmm. uh, to Fortune 500 companies. Yeah. 
Amazing. Well, Howie, I, I just have to say it has been great having you back on the show and uh, I'm excited to continue promoting this book with yourself and the other authors. So that being said, we're going into 2023, recording this in early January. Um, what's next? I mean, what's next for you? What's next for the business? Yeah, we're just trying to scale both of our businesses and put some people in place to try to bring them to the next level. HJZ Productions, our staffing business, got a, a new contract, so we're excited about that. And uh, we're just trying to you know, keep our clients, uh, our current clients happy. Well, as if somebody wants to follow up and to learn more, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, my website, howiezales.com, and you can reach all of the our different companies' websites from there or at Howard Zales on LinkedIn. Wonderful. And what we'll put all that information in the show notes so our audience could just click on the links and head right on over. And uh, speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters or engaging in an episode, we're all about bringing on business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and having them share their story, their journey, their mission, you know, why they do what they do, how they're doing it, and what we can all learn and gain from that information so that we all grow together. I mean, that's really the whole point of the Mission Matters platform so that we can all grow together. If that's the type of content that sounds interesting or fun or engaging to you, hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Howie, again, congrats. I'm thrilled to publish you and have you in our, in our book series. I mean, thanks again for coming back on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you, Adam. I really appreciate the opportunity.